Our world lead, President Trump praising a ceasefire deal between Turkey and the uh, Kurds in the U.S. to uh, allow for the withdrawal of Syrian Kurdish forces, calling it a great day for civilization. Turkey's foreign minister, not so sure. He said this is not a permanent ceasefire, nor is it an end to the hostilities. This all comes as Russia and Iran and Assad in Syria are all pushing to fill the power vacuum being left in northern Syria after President Trump abruptly ordered all U.S. forces out of the area, largely surrendering American alliances and influence in parts of the Middle East. Joining me now to discuss is retired Navy Admiral William McRaven. He served as the head of U.S. Special Operations Command and oversaw the 2011 bin Laden raid. He also just released a scathing New York Times op-ed titled, Our Republic is Under Attack from the President. Uh, Admiral, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, let, me, let me first of all ask you, our republic is under attack from the President. How? Yeah, well, I made two points uh, in the op-ed, uh, Jake. First was that, you know, if you want to destroy an organization, any organization, you destroy it from within, you destroy it from without, and then what you do is you convince everybody that you're doing the right thing. So when you take a look at what the president has done, he's undermined the intelligence community, the law enforcement community, the Department of Justice, the State Department. He has called the press the enemy of the American people. And I will tell you, I've fought a lot of America's enemies, the press is not the enemy of the American people. Then you take a look at uh, undermining us from without. He's obviously left, uh, left our allies, the Kurds, on the battlefield. We feel like we have betrayed them. He's undermined uh, our NATO allies. He's taken us out of the JCPOA and the TPP. And, and really, the international community has lost faith in America. And then throughout the course of all of this, he's convinced us that he's doing it for all the right reasons. And I think that is really what is, uh, what is troubling. But if I can... The other part of the op-ed that I think is equally important is that I think Trump forgets that we are a nation of values, that we are not just transactional. He's a transactional president. He believes that it's only good if it is good for us. But he forgets that we're the same nation that fought Nazism and fascism and imperialism and communism and terrorism. And we did that not because it was just good for us, but because it was the right thing to do. And the men and women in the military and the intelligence community and the law enforcement community those people, those Americans believe that these values are important. I don't believe the president fully understands that. And, and you write, uh, quote, if our promises are meaningless, how will our allies ever trust us? If we can't have faith in our nation's principles, why would the men and women of this nation join the military? And if they don't join, who will protect us? If we are not the champions of the good and the right, then who will follow us? And if no one follows us, where will the world end up? You really see it in, in that stark a view. You really see it as the United States is basically under President Trump, in your view, amoral, uh, not, not necessarily immoral, but amoral, and that could really have a devastating effect on the world. Yeah, as I've said a number of times before, Jake, I've had the, the privilege and the honor of working for a lot of presidents, and I didn't always agree with them, but I always believed that they were men of principle. They were trying to do what was right by the country. Uh, they didn't always get it right, but they were trying to do what was right. I don't see that in this president. And my point, and again, I will never speak for everybody in the military. That's not my intent. Uh, the individuals can speak for themselves. But I will tell you that I know what motivated me, and I can offer what motivated a lot of the people that worked for me, is the fact that we thought we were doing the right thing, that we believed in these values. We believed in the Constitution. We believed that we were a nation of laws. We believed in the First Amendment. We believed in universal rights. We believed that we were the good guys. And if we're no longer the good guys, it's going to be very difficult to inspire people to join any, the intelligence community, the military, any, any part of the federal government where those values are so critical to doing your job and to sacrificing for this country. Admiral, yesterday uh, President Trump described uh, the Kurds as people who were not angels. Take a listen to President Trump this afternoon. I want to thank the Kurds because they were incredibly happy with this solution. This is a solution that really, well, it saved their lives, frankly. If we didn't go this unconventional, tough love approach, you could have never gotten it done. Based on what the Kurds have said publicly, it does not actually sound like they are incredibly happy. Yeah, my guess is that they are not happy, uh, Jake. And, and while I'm glad we have this ceasefire, uh, this does not absolve the president from the egregious decision he made to begin with. And if part of his strategy was to allow the Turks to go to war with the Kurds so that they could kill over 100 Kurds and displace hundreds of thousands, that frankly was not a very good strategy. And I don't think anybody truly believes that. Admiral William McRaven, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. And, and thank you, as always, for your service to this country.
Thanks, Jake.